Brian, do we have any idea how many people are on the live stream? We'll know that. I can tell once it's up. Yesterday, there were only about 20. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and let everybody in charge. Brian. Sounds good. You can go ahead and get started, Sean. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Aiken, and I'm the school superintendent here in Shaler Area School District. Thank you for joining us today uh, for this presentation. Uh, we're going to have a, a short, about 15, 20 minute presentation, and then we'll have an opportunity for questions at the end. Uh, just to, to be clear, we'll have some guidelines for those questions and answers. And I just ask that you keep your uh, microphones muted uh, during the presentation today. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us and um, we look forward to connecting with you. So just wanted to uh, welcome and thank you, as I said. Uh, and then also I just wanted to um, state as we communicate earlier this week that we're going to be transitioning to hybrid instruction next week Tuesday, January 19th for cohort A, and then cohort B will be transitioning into uh, hybrid instruction later in the week on Thursday. Uh, again, one of the reasons why that uh, we don't, we didn't start on Monday is that Monday, January 18th is a clerical in-service day for our staff and students do not have school that day. Um, so once again, just uh, something that we've communicated often is uh, as we transition to hybrid, uh, we want to make sure that our students and staff uh, maintain uh, safety and we meet all the health guidelines and the safety guidelines out by the outlined by the Pennsylvania Department of Health. And we're going to continue to adhere to those guidelines as we transition to in-person learning. So one of the questions that we've received quite frequently over the past week is why did we extend for an additional week? Uh, we spent time you know, communicating with families, emailing, uh, talking about this question over the phone, but just also wanted to address it here. Um, as many of you may be aware, um, the Pennsylvania and Allegheny County Health Departments of, uh, Departments of Health uh, have continued to share their concerns related to uh, the surges in cases following holidays. Uh, we saw this back in, in the fall with, with Halloween, uh, then at Thanksgiving, and uh, we anticipated around the, the Christmas break and the winter break and New Year's that there, were going to, there was going to be another spike in numbers. And, and we're seeing that. Um, that one week extension allows for us to get one week further out uh, from the New Year's holiday, and this gives us the opportunity to, um, you know, keep the number of quarantines and positive cases to a minimum. Uh, so that was a concern of ours, and that's why uh, the administration and the school board determined uh, to extend from earlier this week, the 11th to the 19th for hybrid instruction. So one of the questions that we get often is also about cohorts and uh, starting back into hybrid instruction. It's important to note that students who were in cohort A will remain in cohort A. Students in cohort B will remain in cohort B and students who are in cohort C will continue to receive their instruction at home. Uh, there are students that have contacted families that have contacted us over the last week to transition a student from cohort A or B to cohort C and vice versa. Uh, it's important to note that if you have a desire to change your cohort, not cohort A to cohort B, but either cohort A to cohort C or cohort B to cohort C and then C uh, to in-person instruction, please contact your building principal, uh, your school by Friday, January 15th. Uh, that's, that's important as we get ready to plan and ensure that our students and staff are safe, uh, that we make sure that, that we can uh, function appropriately, meeting the guidelines, uh, the social distancing. Uh, and so we ask that anybody that has any changes whatsoever, 
please contact your principal by the end of this week. Also just wanted to mention there, uh, a question came up earlier in this week, this week about bus assignments. They have not changed uh, going back to the fall when we came back October 12th through uh, the middle of November. Uh, the same uh, school bus that your, your son or daughter rode during that time will be the same transportation that's provided as we start up next week. Uh, if you have any questions about transportation, also contact your main office of your child's school. And uh, you can also find this information in Infinite Campus. So back in November, uh, the state uh, sent something out to all the, the school districts in the state of Pennsylvania for us to sign an attestation agreement. And in that attestation agreement, uh, it, it included new orders uh, requiring public schools in the counties with substantial community to attest to health and safety protocols. And at that time, back in November, uh, we were in substantial in the county and we were in uh, remote virtual learning. And so at that time, we determined that we were going to stay. Uh, and so we submitted that attestation agreement to the state of Pennsylvania stating that we were going to remain in uh, a remote uh, virtual instruction model. And now as we transition back, we are also issuing an attestation agreement ensuring that we're going to uh, adhere to all the mitigation efforts uh, that the state has outlined and we are going to move to in-person instruction next week. And so we are submitting this attestation agreement now uh, and that we will continue to follow the universal face coverings order uh, and the recommendations for pre-K to 12 regarding social distancing. Uh, and we're going to continue to uh, follow um, the protocol of identifying the positive COVID cases similar to what we did back in October and November. Brian, you're muted. Thank you, Dr. Aiken. Um, as was mentioned, when the county is in substantial levels of community transmission, um, the school district must comply with additional guidelines from the Department of Education uh, that uh, really helps us close individual school buildings that experience an, a certain number of positive cases within a 14 day period of time. Uh, and with this matrix, which we'll show you here in just a minute and was included in, in the communication from the district um, earlier this week, the number of positive COVID-19 cases will trigger individual school closings uh, based on the school size. So different than what we had before where we uh, have opted to close the entire district and move students to uh, fully remote learning, we'll be looking at it on a building by building basis. And you can see here, um, the recommendations are based on the school size. Um, our, in the large building category is our high school. Uh, in the medium category is the middle school and elementary school. And then in the small school buildings are our four primary schools. And based on the number of uh, staff and students combined that are confirmed positive cases within a 14 day period, uh, you will see the recommendations range from cleaning the areas where the uh, individual case spent time, um, which is already part of our standard uh, procedure when we have a confirmed positive case within a building. Uh, additionally, uh, you will see the second column is recommendations of closures from a potential of three to seven days based on an identified number of positive cases. And then finally, um, if we are to have um, you know, a, a higher number of, of students and staff uh, the recommendation from the department would be uh, to close the building for 14 days uh, to allow for cleaning and adequate contact tracing. So this will be the matrix that the district will be following. Uh, and in order to provide families with information uh, relative to where we stand uh, with any potential school closures, we are launching a COVID-19 dashboard. Um, this dashboard is being launched 
uh, with the purpose of increasing transparency uh, and to help our community anticipate the need for the district um, to issue a possible school closure. Um, you will see that the link was also included in the email communication that was sent to you uh, earlier in the week. Um, it will uh, be updated uh, as we uh, are notified of confirmed cases um, by families in the Allegheny County Health Department. Um, if a school does experience positive COVID-19 cases, we will continue to send an email communication to all families and staff members in that affected building. And just to reiterate, the number of positive COVID-19 cases uh, in a specific building may trigger a school closure uh, based on that individual school size. Um, so that dashboard will um, provide information uh, to families and you will see some photos of what that dashboard will look like. Um, the key features uh, of the public dashboard include the total confirmed cases um, active and resolved. So those individuals who have completed their isolation uh, period uh, as outlined in the guidance. Uh, uh, families and staff members will be able to see the 30 day trend uh, of the confirmed cases in the school district, an individual breakdown by building, um, and then the 14 day case count uh, to determine the operational mode uh, that the district or that individual school uh, will be uh, working in. So the, the COVID-19 public dashboard will go live um, beginning uh, on Tuesday uh, when we resume in-person instruction uh, and will be available via the district website. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, the universal face, face masking order uh, does uh, remain in place uh, and was updated uh, by the Pennsylvania Department of Health on November 18th. 2020. Um, again, uh, it does state that face coverings can only be removed when eating or drinking, um, spaced at least six feet apart. When there is an unsafe condition uh, to operate equipment or uh, execute a task. And then finally, when students and staff are engaging in a face covering break, um, that they are at least six feet apart and it lasts uh, no longer than 10 minutes. Um, our students uh, and staff did a, a phenomenal job with face masking uh, when we were in hybrid last. Um, we expect that to be the same, and we just ask our families um, to remind uh, their children of the face masking requirement as we transition back into hybrid instruction. Um, as a note, all of the mitigation strategies that we use in October and November will continue uh, as we transition back into hybrid instruction next week. Um, one of the areas that we are really asking uh, families to be astute to is the daily symptom screening. Um, you know, we understand uh, that this can be a challenge for families, uh, but this is truly our first barrier uh, to keeping all of our students and staff in our larger school community safe. So we are uh, continuing to ask parents to check their students at home as part of the daily screening before sending your child to school, either via the school bus or through your own mode of transportation. We are asking students to stay at home if they have one or more of the symptoms listed in group A or two or more of the symptoms in group B, um, or if they are taking any fever reducing medications. Um, if your child staying home as a result of answering yes to any of the above questions, all that we would ask you to do is consult with your school nurse prior to uh, returning your child to school. Um, you know, really at this point, we want to err on the side of caution. Uh, if your child tells you that they're not feeling well, um, you know, reach out to the school nurse or reach out to your family physician uh, prior to sending your child to school, um, just so that we can protect um, our staff, we can protect our students, um, and ultimately we can keep our schools open uh, to in-person instruction. You're muted, Mr. Aiken. Thank you. Okay, so there are some updated travel restrictions that we'd like to share with you today. Um, you'll notice the, the, the first bulleted item there is students who are above the age of 11. Uh, if they've traveled outside of Pennsylvania, uh, we are going to ask them to uh, produce evidence of a negative COVID-19 test or place themselves in a quarantine 
for 10 days without a test or a seven day quarantine with a negative test on or after day five of the quarantine. Uh, that language has changed recently and we wanted to share that with you. Um, one thing this does not, there's kind of a caveat to this and that does, uh, that this does not apply to those uh, students and families who are traveling outside the state uh, in a 24 hour window of time. And this could be for a medical reason, uh, it could be for a court order such as child custody. Uh, so that, that um, updated travel restriction does not include a student that may have to travel across uh, state lines for that issue. And then uh, the next piece of this that we you know, wanna continue, our, our school nurses have been amazing in this whole process. The last 10 months, they have been an excellent resource and an asset for our school district and our families and our community. And we ask that you continue to communicate uh, with our school nurses on a frequent basis. Uh, anything that you need to share with them regarding the health safety and well-being of your child would be greatly appreciated. Um, just a few bulleted items there that we, we ask that you contact your school nurse regarding is uh, if you travel outside the state of Pennsylvania, uh, or a student uh, or a member of your household test positive for COVID-19, uh, your child has been in close contact with a confirmed or a presumed uh, positive COVID-19 case, um, and or your child is currently quarantined or isolated due to a recent exposure outside of school or due to travel. Uh, once again, our, our school nurses are excellent resources uh, and they have been uh, very responsive to the needs of our students, our families, our staff, and uh, the school nurses can be contacted via phone, email, uh, there's also their information on our website if you're not sure who your school nurse is. Okay, at this time, uh, I am going to uh, just remind you that there's a frequently asked questions document on our website. Uh, please visit the hybrid instruction FAQ guide. Uh, we are constantly updating this guide uh, to make sure that, that the, the common questions that we are receiving from families, uh, we're not only putting the question, but also the responses on there so that, that families can see that. Uh, this is a great resource uh, for our families in the community. All right, uh, at this time, uh, Dr. O'Black, I think you are going to provide some of the guidelines for any questions that may need uh, asked. Thank you. Um, so if you have questions that you would like to ask, we would just ask that you please raise your hand using the reaction tool uh, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, when recognized, please unmute yourself and state your name. Uh, just as a reminder, individual questions that are personal in nature uh, should be directed to your building principal or the appropriate department. So do we have any, uh, any questions uh, from anybody on the call today? There are any questions from anybody on the Zoom call this afternoon before we conclude? Dr. Aiken, I, I don't see any, any questions this afternoon from the group. Okay. Uh, well, just in closing today, I'd just like to thank you for joining the, the Zoom call this afternoon. Please don't hesitate to reach out to your, your school office, your school principal, a counselor, a teacher, if you have any questions at all. Also, uh, Dr. O'Black and I try to respond uh, to emails as quickly as possible. If you have a question, don't hesitate to e email us as well. Um, we thank you for your support and partnership with us during this, this incredibly difficult time. Uh, we look forward to uh, 
moving our students back into uh, in-person learning, hybrid instruction next week, and just having that opportunity to engage with them in person, uh, we think it's, it's going to be tremendous. And, and I know our teachers are looking forward to that as well. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for this day. Oh, Dr. Black, it looks like maybe Michelle Craig just raised her hand. Uh, Michelle, are you there? Yeah, I just had, uh, and I'm sorry if I missed this, I was uh, multitasking. Um, do you anticipate the uh, primary or the elementary going back five days just due to the new um, information that was put out by the Department of Education? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that is definitely the goal. Uh, we want to get our students back in next week and progress in that area. And we're going to be continuing to monitor closely and, and hopefully sometime in the month of February. Uh, we hope to uh, look at our elementary program or our, our primary program and uh, see if it's uh, possible that we can get our students, uh, especially our primary students, into five-day instruction in person. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, well, as I was saying, thank you for your partnership and your willingness to uh, engage with us in, in the meeting today. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions. And uh, we look forward to seeing uh, your children coming back into schools next week. Have a great afternoon, everyone.